so as an author, I know that I've like written a lot of words. I write books. It's a thing. But sometimes it really hits you of like, oh, I created this big old place. Wow. And diving further into the audiobook world, I'm very excited because I found an amazing narrator for the Anna of Il Brea series. Alexandra is super talented. I've already gotten to hear the first 15-minute sample of Ember and Stone, which if you are not super familiar with the way that ACX produces audiobooks is you hire someone and then for every book that they're going to produce for you, they send you a first 15 minute sample as like a checkpoint of, you know, we good, this is what you want your narrator to sound like, sweet. And then they go and record the whole book. So and you proof the whole book and there's like a lot of other things. But the first step is the first 15 minutes. So I got to listen to her first 15 minutes and she's amazing. I'm really excited to share Anna's story with the world in this new format. It's going to be great. So Rewinding a little bit, in preparing Alexandra to record Anna's story, of course, with every narrator I've worked with for The Tethering, for Brian Adams, for Girl of Glass, I've had to send them information up front that goes beyond just, you know, here's the PDF of the book, have fun. For something like Girl of Glass, it wasn't really that much. It was things like, this is how you say now it. It rhymes with ballot and like a few little name things and then it's like cool have fun record um with the tethering and the tale of brian adams it got a little bit more complicated because there are spells in it so we had to go through really i made my husband go through and we sat together and i made him speak all the spells very slowly into a recording because there's something about slowly saying spell words that overwhelms me and i just can't do it but we got to anna and i'm like there is not really any spells in Anna. It's fine. I'm just going to send her, like, the names. Just the names because, you know, it's Obrea. It's a made-up place. Some of the names are kind of hard. Just names. No big deal. So I started with the easy names. Anna Ryland. Cool. Liam Dwayne. Great. I'm going through. There's things like, you know, Emmett. Finn. They're normal names. You can really only pronounce them one way. So I'm like, "Ah, I don't need to do that. I skip. And then I start getting down to things like Maeve, Lolly, Orla. And I'm sending her all four books worth of information at once because the final files for the final book in the Enna of Elberia series, they're due in September. So she's doing the whole thing really fast. So I needed to get her all the names at once. So I'm going through and I'm like, I need, I need to check my lists. I should really check my writing files to make sure I'm sending her all the names she needs. So I pull up my writing files and it's just lists and lists and lists of names across the four books. And I get through all that. I'm all recorded. And then I'm like, ah, wait, place names. I need to do place names too. So then I go through, you know, Harain, Nantic, Freysons Glen. Cool. That wasn't so bad. But then I had to go through all the made up words in Ilbrea, like chiving, cact, lax, pound, make all of those. So by the end, she had three fairly long audio files in order to cover the whole series. And just in going through the words, the pronunciations, and not even all of them, not even saying like Finn and Emmett, just the ones where I'm like, this could very easily go badly with this name. Orla is not necessarily the most easy to pronounce if you just see O-R-L-A on the paper. Like, sure, that's how I'd say it. But, you know, you could do it lots of different ways because it's not a word that you commonly hear. So just going through those words and how long it was and how much I'm overwhelming my poor narrator Alexandra by being like, have this tome of information. Good luck. I realized how big and how deep the end of Ilbrea series goes, how large the scope of her story is. Which is hysterical to me because the Anna of Ilbrea series is only the first series in Ilbrea. 
there's already, well, the second book in the Guilds of Ilbrea series comes out in July. Woot woot. Um, there's going to be more books in that series. And then I'm starting on a Sorcerer series later this year. My plan is to have seven different series that are all separate in this world. I wanted to build a big, deep, huge world, but I don't really think I had realized quite how far I'd gotten in creating this massive landscape just with Anna until I had to read off everyone's names slowly with really good diction to make sure that I was being helpful to my poor narrator. And it made me wonder, as I move forward with the different Ilbrea series, how many more names am I going to have to give the future narrators? Because if you look at Anna's story, everything is told very directly from her point of view. We are only ever in one place at one time, and she has to be there or it didn't happen. Well, it could have happened, but you're not going to see it on the page because everything comes directly from her. It's very tight. It's a very deep point of view. So you really get to know Anna. It is all about her. And I think that's why my readers become very attached to Anna and to her story is because you are inside her as all of this is happening. It is a first person past tense point of view. It is very deep. It is very visceral. You become very attached to this character. But then you go into something like the Guilds of Ilbrea series where there are seven different points of view in book two in the series. So you're on different places in the map. You are meeting different societies where only one point of view may actually end up meeting these people. You're going different places. You're in different cities with different cultures. So the names have different formats of how they're created because, yes, I'm that kind of person. And so as we get further and further and further into the Gilbrean world, how long are those audio files going to be that I'm going to have to give to future Ilbrean narrators? And that's aside from the minor breakdown I had when I realized that it's always been pretty easy so far for me to pick whether I wanted a male or female narrator for each of my stories. You know, obviously, Brian, I want a male narrator. Girl of Glass, I want a female narrator. Anna, female narrator. But for the Guilds of Ilbrea series, I kind of want a female narrator because of the one point of view, but then really I want a male narrator. So then do I have a male narrator and a female narrator? But then do I have the female narrator narrate the chapters that are from a female point of view, even though it's third person? Or do I have them like duet? So then it's really all a female narrator, but anytime a male speaks, a male speaks, but that's kind of weird and pulls you out of it. And there are too many choices to make because really it feels like audiobooks, you should just be like, hey, you're super talented. Want to read my words and I'll give you money. But it's not. It is not like that at all. There are lots of choices that have to be made. And I don't feel like I'm really ready to make that choice for the Guilds of Ilbrea series yet. On the plus side, I have time because that series is not complete. And until I have a release date for the final book, I really don't feel comfortable hiring a narrator for a series just because as an actor, a musical theater actor, not a voiceover actor, but you know, still an actor, I know that people like to get out of the game sometimes. They want a steadier career with like a 401k in healthcare. So I don't want to hire a narrator and have them record part of the series but then they're no longer a narrator for a living. So I have to either re-record from the beginning or find someone who can almost match their work or just say, I'm sorry, listeners. It's going to be weird because Adriel's not going to sound the same anymore, but this is the best I can do. Now, Alexandra is phenomenal. She has the list. She has the knowledge of what point in time and a story is being told from, which is very complicated, but it matters, even though it doesn't matter to the reader. It matters to how the information is presented because it colors the mini monologue sections, which probably doesn't really matter to the readers, but it definitely matters to me. And if you ever go back and reread the series and you want to email me and be like, what do you mean by that? Let me know. I'd be happy to tell you exactly what point in time she's telling her story from. But if you've never read the series, it doesn't matter. You're not missing anything but it matters to me. So now the narrator knows and she has all of this backstory and it's going to be wonderful and beautiful. And yeah, I am excited to have the NL Vilbrea series ready to present to the world on audio. Uh, 
the final book in the Tale of Bryant Adams, Five Spellbinding Laws to International Larceny, is almost ready to be sent to ACX to be put out into the world, so hopefully within 30 days. It's run by Amazon. We'll see how quickly those files actually get out there. But I'm very excited to have all of these books out there to you in audio. Um, my reviewers for Myth and Storm, which is book two in the Guilds of Ilbrea series, will be getting their invitation to request a advanced reader copy of that very soon. There's all kinds of wonderful things happening. So yeah, it's crazy around here. And you know, Sometimes you just have to sit there and speak into your phone very slowly for hours and hours. Anna Ryland. Liam Dwayne. I created a very large world. I'm so sorry I am making you listen to this recording of names that is going to last forever because there are lots of people in these four books, but thank you for signing all four contracts at once, Alexandra. You are very talented and we are thrilled to have you on board for narrating the full Anna Evilbrea series. Yeah, that's really what it felt like. But I will see you all next time with more news and wonderful behind-the-scenes look at this crazy life of being an author. Until next time, bye-bye.